the noble false widow spider. Let me tell you, this little bugger is a nasty piece of work. It's a spider, yes, and it's widespread across the country. And according to research published by NUI Galway, its bite can be as bad as that of the infamous black widow spider. And in some cases, it can result in hospitalization. Richard Faulkner joins me on the line from rent kill And thank you, Richard, for taking our call. So it's not a native species. Where did it come from and how did it get in here? Right. It's, it's not native. Um, it originates around the Canaries. Um, so it would have just come in normally with trade. Um, from that point, it's been in Ireland, though. The first record of it on the island was in 1997 in Bray and Wicklow. But um, it's one of those spiders that is really, really good at adapting especially in and around buildings. It's quite evasive. You can find it all over the Americas and stuff now as well. So it, it's just travelled and it's taken off well. Um, we've and got it's... Uh, sorry, Richard. I'm told it's quite comfortable, thank you very much, living in the environs of your typical family home. Yep, yep, they are. They, they, they like buildings. But the thing is, with, with spiders, um, they like to come inside because they can build webs that are sheltered. And we get insects that come inside so they've got prey there they're there because of the insects they're not there because of us um <clears throat> on that sort of thing but yeah they are quite happy in and around our buildings um we've got it, it's not just one fighter so you've got the noble false widow which is the toad and noblis, which is the one that's getting all the press at the moment and has been the last few years but there's also stetoda by plantata which is the rabbit hudge spider that's out in around the outside of your your house in your garden in your shed that sort of area we've got steatoda grossa which is another one that comes in that's called the cupboard spider and that's also generally known as they call it the false black widow and then we've also got steatoda triangulosa which is the triangulated cobweb spider so there are a family of spiders but it is the, the noble false widow the one that you've mentioned that right. is the one that's getting the press and it's the one that you can have an adverse reaction to its bite I get the feeling since this story broke towards the end of last week, that um, in households across the country, we have husbands and wives, partners, boyfriends, girlfriends, boyfriends, boyfriends, whatever, turning the place upside down, searching for this dirty little creature. Uh, what does it look like? And, um, you know... So, it, again, describing anything, it, it looks a bit like, see, it's... The way I'm talking, it looks a bit like an all-breathing spider. It's got a yellow band around its back end, around the, the, the sort of abdomen of the spider. Um, and it's got slightly striped legs, but a lot of spiders look similar. The all-breathing spiders that you get out in your garden, and also sometimes you'll get in your house, look very similar. Um, and, and that's the thing with it. People are, are getting quite paranoid about it, but as the article in um, from that was published by NUI Galway said it is one of the most common household spiders now. So they're in and around us all the time um, and bites are very seldom. Yes, they can happen. People can have a per adverse reaction. Are we having as much paranoia about wasps when you think how many people die from anaphylactic shock from wasps in a year? And there's a lot more wasps about. It's just putting it into perspective. So yes, they're a risk. Um, you could have a nasty reaction to the bite. The best thing to do is, as you said, tear your house up and down. If you hoover regularly, you dust all the time, you disturb that environment so it's not settled, you're going to stop spiders in general. You're going to reduce spider activity. And this little fella can live up to, I'm told, five, six, maybe seven years. So, you know, it's not a case of where they bite you and then they disappear, bye-bye, good luck, or anything like that. But, yes. you know, maybe this isn't a question for you, but from experience, how do you know if you've been bitten by one of them? Um, that's, that's the thing. Sometimes when you're bitten by a spider, you might not even feel it. It's the same as being bitten by a mosquito or a flea or a bug even, you might not feel that bite. Um, but the thing is, if you... <laughs> some people, when you're reading the accounts, have been fortunate they've actually seen the spider bite them. And it's like with anything, if you're bitten 
and you start to take a reaction or get short breath or anything like that, you need to get medical attention. Um, okay. So, yeah, it, it's sort of out of my area about how would you I understand. know that you've been bitten, but as, as you said, it, it's standard things. So if you start to feel any discomfort and pain, and I know recently there was the lady who got this cellular like on the bite and had to be hospitalised. I think she was in for six days. And there's different accounts um, that you can read, especially when they're mentioning from the UK, where people have been three or four days in hospital, or people have had quite a lot of soreness and discomfort, or, 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 or had to have bites drained from um, false widow spiders. Mm. Do they? Is uh, someone said to me this time of year is a busy time for them? I don't know. Are they laying eggs or mating or whatever they're at, or are they sort of busy all year round? Um, the thing is with, with spiders, generally outside this time of year, you're going to, especially once it gets warmer, warm weather is really, really good for our invertebrates and our insects. They really, really thrive in this weather. Um, so they're going to be active, but you're going to find with spiders, they're a lot more active outside at this time of year. It's when the weather starts to sort of turn in autumn, traditionally we get more spider activity right. because they're going to come into buildings where it's slightly warmer. Okay. So, but there's yeah, nothing, I mean, yeah. yeah, I knew this would happen as someone has called in. What can be done to completely rid your house of them, if anything at all? Um, it's very, very hard to rid your house of any sort of insects. You're only always going to find sort of insects or um, other arthropods like arachnids, like spiders in your house. Um, and traditionally as well, when you're talking about autumn, everybody's going on about the, the giant house spider because that comes in and they're running about um, because they're looking for mates. They mate at that time of year. Um, it, it's literally about cleaning and disturbing the environment, especially when you've got web building spiders. The more you dust, the more you hoover, you're destroying the webs and you're, you're taking away that environment. Um, Keeping doors and windows shut when not in use because that just attracts insects in and insects are their food prey. So if you take away the food source, then they've got no real reason to be there. Right. Okay. So it's see, more about sort of environmental yeah, but management, but the more housekeeping and cleaning you do, the more likely it is that you're not going to have as many of these pests. All right. But at the same time, we have to take into account that if you do have one or two of these little fellas in your house, um, they're ridding your house of insects as well. So, they you know... Are, exactly, they are. They, they, they're they like a natural pest controller, really, at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay. They're very, very beneficial. Spiders are, are, are very beneficial for your ecosystem and are very beneficial that way as well, especially when you're looking at biting insects and midges and stuff, that sort of thing. Okay. All right. Sound advice there. Richard Faulkner from rent -a kill Thank you indeed for being Thank with you. us on the show today. I don't want to be scaring the living daylights out of you. I had to think long and hard before doing that piece on the show this morning because there's been so much talk about this noble black widow over the last four to five days. Look, if there's one or two in your house... In my view, they're doing no harm at all, as long as they don't get into your bed. And by the way, they've been known to go into people's beds. <laughs> but on, on a serious note, they're ridding your house of dirty little insects. Just keep your distance. That's all you have to do. Just keep their, your distance and let them get on with life. And there wasn't a word about them until this research came out last week. So they've been here for the last 100 years. Why all, why all of a sudden are we so interested in them? I know in some cases there has been a bad reaction to a bite. But as Richard Faulkner said there, you know, take, for example, the wasp. And we all know that in some cases, you know, a wasp sting can cause anaphylactic shock. He just mentioned it there. And the poor old wasp is getting very little publicity and can be nasty. Its bite can be nasty. And now all the attention is on this, this noble black widow. Just keep your distance and let them live their lives in harmony with us.